And I will see you in the next life When everything is better When everything is good When everything is good Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Sports Outreach Ministries program. Today's topic, Death and Eternal Life. With your hosts, the Bishop Abu Hezekiah Majahadeen and his co-host, the Minister Thomas M. Bailey. Without further ado, the Sports Outreach Ministries program. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, and hallelujah. Praise the Lord, man of God. Oh, praise the Lord. Lord. Praise the Lord, LG. Hallelujah. It's a wonderful hallelujah. day here in Cleveland on today. We've been having some wonderful, wonderful, wonderful weather. And I like that entry song there, LG. See you in the next life. Hallelujah. Yes. A lot of folks might not see us in the next life. I know life, we're going to see each other. I in know the next I'll life. see y'all in the next life, though. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you and welcome to the show again. I am your host, Bishop Abu Hezekiah Majadi, and this is my co-host and my partner in Christ and Minister Thomas M. Bailey. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise the Lord, Lord, man of God. Hallelujah. The minister is going to be bringing a, a, a wonderful word for us today. We have been talking about the subject because so much has been happening. Uh, folks have been dying around everybody, I'm sure, and around y'all as well. Someone has been dying, okay? But today's subject is death and eternal life. But as we do all shows, before we go another step forward, we got to give God the glory, so let us pray. Most holy and gracious Lord, our Father, we do thank you right now for thank this you, day. We thank, thank you, Lord you, God, Jesus. for the, uh, the show here, Lord God. We thank yes. you for the streaming sports talk radio station, TV station. Lord God, we thank you for these men of God who come every Thursday at 7 o'clock here to be with us, Lord God, to make sure we are on the air, to encourage someone to be strong. Most Heavenly yes. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We glorify you for all you're doing, all you've done, and all you have yet to do. So, son, thank you, Lord God. We get the, You're going to get the glory. You're going to get the honor, and you're going to get the praise on today. And we just thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name, I pray and ask it all. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah, it's yes. been one of those weeks for me. I had a, a young lady uh, that passed away last Monday or Tuesday on the 10th. She had a terrible car accident and she uh, killed herself um, along with another passenger who died with her. Her funeral is tomorrow. I'll be uh, officiating some of that funeral on tomorrow. And I'm just, you know, thinking about life and I'm thinking about death, you know, and I'm thinking about death and eternal life. And we did a lot of research on it, you know. But, hey, one thing I'm going to say, if we go any further, hallelujah, praise the Lord for the Cleveland Indians who is hot, 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 hot. Man, they hot. They off today, but they'll be playing tomorrow. And we just thank God for our Cleveland Indians being Amen. in such a winning, winning zone on today. I also like to congratulate that uh, Floyd Mayweather. I know he did do a wonderful job on winning his championship and maintaining his championship. I think they just named Floyd May Mayweather as the uh, most money-making athlete this year. Too. Yeah, he is the most money-making athlete. Call him athlete. up and tell him to give us a donation. Hallelujah. The most money-making athlete he is right now because the man know how to promote boxing. He know how to do what he say he will do. Uh, he's standing right now about 44 and 0, and I think he got about five but with six more uh, fights in order to break a record right now. Well, if he doesn't fight Pacquiao, as far as I'm concerned, he'll retire a bum. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. See, everybody got their opinion. See, well, I guess it's okay you because. You got to fight Pacquiao. Hey, Come on. Manny Pacquiao is, 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 a, is a pound for pound, a tough fighter, okay? And uh, we got a lot of cats out there that can, can fight, okay, in his division. But guess what? He got the belts like he tell them all. You don't want them? Come take them. Well, hey, while you're talking about Mayweather, I just have to throw this out. Uh, we want to pray and say good luck to uh, Sean Porter, Akron, Ohio's very own Sean Porter, who is out at the Mayweather camp right now in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. Hallelujah. And he'll be fighting this Saturday night, uh, the 18th, 
his next opponent in Atlantic City. And also a big uh, shout-out, and we always pray for our boy Wilkins Santiago. You may have remembered Bishop yeah, uh, yeah. Wilkins Santiago. He's out at the Mayweather camp. And in June, our very own Jeff Woods from Jeff the Ready Woods. to Rumble show Hallelujah. will be making a trip out to do some training and sparring mm-hmm. out at the Mayweather camp. Yes, yes, I heard that. I was listening to Jeff's program on Sunday, and he was saying that he would be out to uh, the Mayweather camp coming up he was talking about some of the uh, young talent that's here in the city of cleveland and we just want to thank god for all of these young sports athletes that are out there doing something the browns we all know what they're going to do because we got jim hasslin that keep on causing this stigma to be on our city and our team and somebody need to do something about him you know but you know rich folks can just about do what they want to do because that's what they do but i'm just saying hey what else is going to happen is this we got to keep on being positive about what we're doing as individuals, okay? That goes for the rich and the poor, okay? This man should kind of step down, put somebody else in charge. I ain't say sell your team, but you don't have to be out front, you know what I mean? Just back out of it and put some more people over it, okay? Let them handle it so you don't be in the limelight and Cleveland don't get this stigma. Let letting anybody come up in here that's smelling all nasty and run something. But I, I'll tell you one thing, though, uh, you know, before we get too far too far into the uh into the uh cleveland browns and i saw your topic tonight death and eternal life yes you know when you talked about jeff woods a minute ago in the show the ready to rumble show uh minister thomas uh, did you ever get to see that show yet on sunday night no i gotta tell you eight o'clock sunday nights the ready to rumble these are true men of god yes that that he brings in here these guys that work for the churches in the in the inner the city center it's unbelievable and, and how they are centers. molding you know we had a kid in here that just turning 18 years old he's gonna graduate from max hayes high school he was here sunday night and the first amen. thing he did was give praise and thanks to god amen, amen. and i said see that here we go again uh, a successful guy that's uh, starting out on his you know his own boxing career and what's he do he gives thanks and praise to god because he said god without god it, i wouldn't have any of this hey man if you don't put god in it you ain't trying to be a success that's first and he's foremost. a straight a honor student at no. high school at max hayes and he is also embarking on his own boxing career and from what i understand he's fairly good well you know like i said there's a lot of great talent here in the city of cleveland uh, in all areas of sports but you know we don't get as much uh, attention when we start trying to do things from this city folks think that we just mistake on the lake but i'm here to tell them that hey this is not called cleveland for nothing okay if you make it here in cleveland you can go any place in the world and make it and they open arms they grab you everybody in new york is from somewhere in the midwest everybody Only with Cal- god though hallelujah everybody in california from somewhere in the midwest a lot of them from uh, the the mid part of the united states everybody went born in california they went to california and brought their talents there too california to do what they do in another point of position on the planet you know with this nice weather and everything it just reminds you of god and i don't know if the minister bailey saw this yet or not the, uh, i put a beautiful thing on the bishop's facebook wall the other day yeah. yesterday yeah. where the where the governor wants to put all the bibles back into the state parks was that in the state of georgia state of georgia Exactly. It's about time they put God back where he belongs, everywhere. They they got to to bring uh, the word of God back to where it was in the society in order for the society to be corrected. You know, the word of God says, if my people who are uh, evil in their ways would change their evil ways, okay, uh, that he would heal the land. But folks ain't understanding what he means when he says, if they change their evil ways, he will heal the land. They got to do like God says, start putting God first, start making God their priority and God will make us his priority which we are his priority anyway which you'll see from today's lesson I have some information here that I want to impart to you before we go any further then I'm going to let the minister Thomas Bailey who's going to bring this message and I'm just going to tag team with him tonight he, uh, he's been studying this here for a long time and everybody's being confronted by some form of death my wife uh, passed away uh, seven years ago uh, during this month of May uh, my mom passed away uh, 12 years ago during this month of May. Uh, my 
partner, uh, friend, and uh, uh, associate Jim Bush. His mother passed away during the month of May. Uh, and most folks is going to the cemeteries and having memorial memorials for their, their loved ones on today. And like I said, this young lady, uh, 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 Will and uh, Guy. And when did we lose our brother, Pastor Reggie? We lost him in about, about May. That's right. About May, you know, so. And seven Pastor, years ago in right, April. Right. April, I lost my April. wife. See, and you lost your wife to almost the, the end of April. You know, so it's like, you know, this time of the year, it looked like death really has a visit on people's lives. And uh, but the word of God tells us that we shouldn't fear death. OK, because we don't have it coming. I was re- I was reading in Ecclesiastics, the 11th chapter and the fifth verse and says, as thou knowest not what is the way of the spirit, nor the bone does not or how the bone does grow in the womb of her um that is with child. Even so, thou knowest not the workings or the works of God who maketh all. So one thing we don't know, I told my son the other day because he was on the phone, on the, on the Internet, Facebook, and he was saying to me, uh, death is, excuse the expression, a lot of BS, okay? And I told him, and this is what I typed back to him, death is the twin brother of sleep, Okay, death is the twin brother of sleep because you don't know no more what's happening to you when you sleep than you do when you're dead. You got to know that before you die and you got to know it before you go to sleep because you might not wake up. You ain't guaranteed to wake up the next day. Okay. Also from the book of Genesis, the second chapter and the seventh verse, and it said, And the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Hallelujah. It says in Christianity, the term eternal life traditionally refers to the continuation or the continued life after death. As I outlined in Christian theology or esteology, okay, the Apostle Creed testifies that I believe the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting, okay, in this view, everlasting life commenced after the second coming of Jesus Christ in the resurrection of the dead. Although in the New Testament, the Johnny and when they said, I say Johnny, and I'm talking about all this books of John, okay, literature that refers to eternal life commencing in this earthly life of the believers. The brother was saying this before we got here, that that's exactly what we better be understanding. Possibly indicates that a inauguration or a commencement, of us living eternally is still possible for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that who shall ever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And with that, I'm going to ask the minister to help us out here on this death and life eternal and death and eternal life. You was doing some research on it. Where were you coming from with this? Give us your point of view on this subject tonight. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, man of God. How are you guys out there? God bless each and every one. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And may the Lord anoint your ears and your eyes right now that you might receive what God has for you pertaining to the subject of death. Amen. Uh, First of all, let me uh, set some foundational things for you in the book of Isaiah chapter 55. Go ahead. It says that the Lord will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. And pardon means to forgive. Amen. To forgive. To forgive. Uh, when you're in a jail situation, if you get a governor's pardon, you can, <laughs> you you can, can go home. You and, can go home. And you could be on death row and get a governor's pardon and, and be able to go home. A, a presidential pardon is, is an international situation. But then he goes to, go to say in verse 8, For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. Amen. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. That's right. All right. So we need to understand right there that what we temporarily understand as death, we should consider it and know, as the uh, bishop said, that it, it's, it's in comparison to being asleep. Man. Uh, when we go into a surgical situation where they have to anesthetize us in order to bring us to a place where we feel no pain, 
uh, the anesthesiologist receives a great deal of money because he can bring you all the way to the point of never waking up again, and he knows how to take you there and bring you back, mm -hmm. that you don't feel no pain until after you wake up in the recovery room and ask for some pain medication. Amen, brother. See, because <laughs> when you sleep, uh, you don't feel nothing, but no when pain. you're awake, pain allows you to know that you are alive because dead folks don't feel nothing. That's right. Also, you need to understand that God said that if we went into the grave without praise, that the rocks would praise his name. That's right. And so we have an understanding that even though a rock sits still on the ground, if God commands it to, it knows how to sing praises. But a dead body, a dead piece of flesh in the ground cannot praise God. That's right. Now, uh, one of the things that we need to first understand about death is, is that death came upon us in the garden when there was a disobedience to God. He had no tolerance for Lucifer while he was in heaven. Mm -hmm. The first death we understand as to be a separation from God, a spiritual and a physical separation from God. Is it possible to be physically alive and spiritually dead? Yes, it is. So, but, so be letting, I'm not to cut you off right here, but I do want to cut you off. Now, you were saying that that death that occurred between Adam and Eve and God was what happened when they went to the tree of uh that there was told to forbidden to, to eat from. So once they ate from that tree, they came became spiritually separated from God. That's right. That's like the first being dead. Part. That is dead. Uh, hallelujah. Come on. That brother. is dead. That's See, because about. we were not created to suffer death. Mm -hmm. We were created for eternal life. Immortality. Hallelujah. Uh, we. What is immortality? Immortality is is that you never have to uh, be sleep again. See, when it says that God never sleeps nor slumbers. Neither did Adam. Man. Neither did Eve. Because Adam was created in the exact image and the exact likeness of God, which means that he was created spirit. But he had no charge over what we call the natural or the physical plane. In order for him to do that, he had to be consumed into a physical body. So that the laws that God had given to nature to govern itself, that it might be in order and stay beautiful was also imputed into Adam as he was joined in the flesh when God made the body from the dust of the ground. I'm trying to keep it simple so that, you know, it won't be so archaic or, or uh, controversial to you to know that there are two parts. People talk a lot of times about losing their mind, but they never say anything about losing their brain. Mm -hmm. So we need to understand that the brain and the mind are separate in in. In, 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 in eternity because the mind is the spirit. To have the mind of God is to have the spirit of God. To think somewhat like God and to do the things that God would do would say that your mind is your spiritual being. When we deal with the word psycho, we're talking about the spirit. When we deal with the word psycho, we're talking about the science of the study of the mind which is the study of the spirit. The Greek psycho word, psycho from the Greek language, means the mind or the spirit. So we need to understand here, again, that as we go back into the garden, that something happened that caused disobedience to be in Adam. First, let me take you to a place. Let us make man in our own image. That's the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit in their separation and in their wholeness. And we need to understand that there was another entity there that was classified as a high arcing angel in heaven, and his name was Lucifer. So that when that part of Lucifer also was built into man, in his spirit also, the same disobedience was him seeing himself more than he was. Okay. So you say it in Genesis 2.17, it says, but you must not eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat from this tree, you will certainly die. Uh-huh. Well, that death was God saying to Adam, I said don't do it, and if you choose to do it, you're disobedient to me. Uh-huh. And your death will come when you find yourself without me. For the mosquitoes and the bumblebees, they don't sting you or bite you now because of 
you stand in my glory. The animals hear you and they come to you because you stand in my glory. We walk together in creation. They are obedient unto me. Therefore, they're obedient unto you. But when we're separated from one another, then they don't see any reason to be obedient to you because they see you as a creature, creature just like themselves. Uh And so unless they get an order from God who created them also, they don't pay us no attention. That's right. That's right. So that means that we need to always be conscious of the fact that death is not to be feared. Why? Because death is already here. Uh Uh-huh. But then when Jesus came, he said that I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Come on. And the scripture that you read out of John three sixteen, mm-hmm. for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Everlasting life does not mean death. That's right. And what I was about to say was is that you can be spiritually dead and yet be still physically alive and the question is how and the question is why well why is because you still have that nature of lucifer in us the falling away is called satan so we have satanic powers in us but we need to understand that the only thing that is challenged by that is the spirit of god because the flesh goes with it any kind of way it wants to. Mm-hmm. The, flesh right? is, the flesh is going to deal with the flesh. And, and he says that the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. Amen. See, so we have strength and we draw strength from feeding on the word of God, which is why Jesus said, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the father of the father. See, we see that fruits and breads and meats and things like that feed our physical body, but the word of God feeds our spiritual Come on. body, our spiritual self. So those things that are of God will come back to God. Well, wow. If then if the spirit belongs to God, then the flesh is enmity towards God. There's no place in heaven for the flesh, which means that the spirit must be going to return unto God. Well, yes, that's true. If the physical man can still be alive and the spirit be dead, then isn't it also possible that the spirit can be alive and the flesh be dead? There you go. All right. So in that, we understand that death now is no longer a confusing situation because God has gathered it together and given us an understanding. Amen. And that understanding is, is that we should not fear death, but we should embrace death. Why? Because what were we before we were in our mother's womb? Dead. Uh, are you sure? Oh, we was alive. Ah, ah we see, was alive. Because, because, because our see, God is a God of the that's that's one of the most living. controversial. That's one of the most controversial subjects under the planet on the sun right now. Is is that child alive? That's in the mother's womb, or is it just a lump of flesh? Well, anything that's moving and growing uh-huh. is alive, ah. even though it just might be a, a yeast infection. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. See, God said he created all things. That's right. And that oh, life time is, out. What was that? What was that? A what? <laughs> a yeast infection. Oh, that's what I thought See, you said. See, I, 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 want you, I, I said that to say that you can take the least. He said that we should not judge anything because we didn't create nothing. That's right. And so if we can take the worst negative thing that we can think of and put life into it, then we can also take the greatest thing that we can think of and speak life into it. Amen. So, because he said that he's for whoever believes on his son, whoever, whoever, and then he turns around is what in Acts mm-hmm. he says, "I will pour my spirit out on all, all flesh. flesh, and all flesh does not just constitute human beings. Yeah, it, it constitutes mm-hmm. everything that is and has sustenance." Because we eat the flesh of an apple. That's right. Come on. Uh huh. We eat the flesh of fruit. We uh-huh. eat the flesh of greens. We eat the flesh of yogurt. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> come on. Come what on. What is that? A, a, a yeast infection. It's, it's, <laughs> 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 All, right. All, right. Yeah. All right, LG. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Look here. So, so, so you gotcha. saying? You saying <laughs> this is wonderful. So Proverbs, Proverbs speaks to it too. And uh, Proverbs eleven nineteen says, "Truly, the righteous man attains life." But whosoever pursueth evil finds death. Uh huh. Because evil is essentially anything also that's against God. But I want you to understand something. Evil is also our disciplinarian or the principal's office 
when we used to have to go to the principal's office. Oh, I know about the principal's so, office. So I'm evil, evil mm-hmm. was imputed by God. Why? Because God said, I created both the good and the evil. That's right. All right? And so when we do things evil is when we produce things in our own self that are against one another. Because we pursued it. And, and, and since we came up with it, uh-huh. then we pursued it, then we acted on it, then we're not showing love to our neighbor. Not at all. See, see, when this thing, when God gets to talking about this thing, the reason that people have fear of death is because they don't have love of God. And that's where, that's where this next scripture, uh, Isaiah 3, 9 says, and this took place like uh, Sodom and Gomorrah says, and they looked on their faces and testified against them, and they paraded their skin like Sodom. They not, they did, they, they do not hide it and say, woe unto them. They have brought disaster upon themselves. That's right. Okay. Then in the New Testament of the Bible, the Bible said God tells me in his word that if a man commits fornication, he sins against his own body. That's right. Well, you do. You do. So in this situation concerning Sodom and Gomorrah or even during that time when people weren't some more Sodomites and they weren't some more Gomorrahites, mm-hmm. it's still a situation where man does evil continually in the sight of God because man wants to and is endowed with that thing called disobedience. Disobedience. Okay, now That's dis- what caused this whole problem in the first place is uh, Adam's disobedience that caused us to have a disobedient spirit that abide with us and we have to corral that spirit and put it under the auspices of God's word in order to crush that spirit that of disobedience. Right, see, disobedience was, was made into us. All right? Exactly. All right, and because it was made into us, we suffered death. And God knew that. Uh-huh. See, because when God created man in his own image, he did not have to deal with the flesh because he was never flesh himself. That's right. Flesh was not of God. God said that he made me in the image of himself, which means that there was some things about me that I didn't know and would not know until he taught me. That's right. But then God says that he would not put a burden on me that I couldn't bear. He had to know so what, you, I, what I, you can hold and what you couldn't hold, what right, your capacity was. Right. So he needed to know what my capacity was. Exactly. So that means that when he weighted me down with a thing, he gave me an avenue of escape. Always. And even in the Garden of Eden, Adam Adam had an avenue of escape if he had of not did all that he did. He ran and hid himself. Because mm-hmm, he knew he was wrong. But, but, it, it's but, like a baby. It's like my grandson. You know, he, he's, he's learning how to uh, uh, know when he has to go to the bathroom. But it ain't so much easier. Ain't it so much easier when they come to you and they say, I'm sorry, I wet my pants. Oh, yeah. I then no running problem. and hiding. Yeah, then running and hiding. So Adam had an avenue of escape, and it was called... Confession with your mouth. Confess with repent, your mouth. Repent, baby. And repent. then repent. Hallelujah. All right. See, so confession is made good for the what? The soul, man. Ah, Hallelujah. you see that thing? Yeah. So if Adam had confessed what he had done instead of trying to blame the woman for what he did, because uh-huh. she didn't put it in his no, mouth. No, he she, took it from her hand and bit it itself. That's right. So that's if right. he had to confess the trueness of the situation, then we may not have been in the situation. But now I'm going to show you another attribute that was in Adam that was in Lucifer. Self-righteousness. Yes. Uh, jealousy. Uh, envy. All right. A contrite heart, uh-huh. which means against God. Right. See, if you show me something that that I want to feel is uh, less than me, I'm not going to agree with you. I'm going to get so put you, out. So what, you, what you're saying, what you're saying, I'm hearing you again, what you're saying is that Genesis 2 and 17 said, but you must not eat of this tree of knowledge of good and evil, for when you do this, you certainly will die. What you're saying there is Adam knew that he was going to have some type of action that was going to come from his action to what he did that was going to cause God to respond to them in the way that he did. Right, but he never imagined that it was going to be a separation. Right, because he didn't understand what death was. Exactly. Well, he didn't understand life either he, because uh, he had it see, already. But see, the thing of it is, if you never experience anything that is opposite of where you are, then all you know is what you got. Amen. We're going to come back. We're going to take a break here for our sponsors. We're going to come here, come back, and 
continue this conversation because Jesus prepared us for a special, special blessing uh, at the end of all of this here. A new heaven and a new earth. And we may talk about that, too. But right now, we just want to take a quick break and we'll be back after the call. Give us a call here if you're interested in this conversation. 216-672-4300. We love to hear from you. Hear what you got to say. Give us a call here at the station. 216-672-4300. So much in so little time. You were here when I wasn't aware, and you saved my life. Little did I know you were my peace of mind. the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to thank God right now for saving me. I don't know about nobody else. I can't speak for them, but I do want to thank him for saving me, uh, which he did come into my life at a time I was at my lowest and he still saw fit to save me. It says, Thus, like, uh, unlike the uh, synoptics, which is the gospel of John, eternal life is not only futuristic, but it also pertains to the present. In John, those who accept Christ can process, uh, possess life, I'm sorry, can possess life here and now, as well as in eternity. For they have passed from death to life, as John 5, 24 says, and says, he who hears my word and believes that he sent me has eternal life and came not, he said, and I come not to judgment, but has passed out death into life. John, in his purpose of uh, incarnation of death, resurrection, and the glorification of the word, was providing eternal life to humanity. In his own words, he was trying to tell you that if you believe what we're trying to get in you right now, you had that same opportunity to receive this eternal life which God has given us. I used to be really afraid of leaving here right now. Sometimes I look forward to it because it gets so, uh, so bad. Paul put it like this. He said, yes, we are fully confident and would rather be away from these earthly bodies for then we will be at home with the Lord. Amen. Amen. I heard the uh, bishop just say something, and uh, I usually try to keep it to myself, but I'm not afraid anymore. Amen. So uh, I need you to understand now that uh, part of my testimony is, is that the Lord let me know that as soon as I start speaking his word and living for him, that I would die. That's right. 
But as a young man, a, a baby really, um, still caught in the world, I was afraid, and I'm saying this truthfully, I was afraid that if I found a soapbox and stood on a corner and did what my heart was calling me to do, and that was to teach and to preach about the Lord Jesus, that I would die. Uh, he even showed me being in great places and that I would be assassinated and it was amazing that it was not during the Martin Luther King era. It was before then. Uh, and I never knew what it meant. But I understand now that uh, since God has brought me from one place to another, that even right now I'm experiencing a newness of life. Because in this life, I'm not afraid of death. He's given me to understand that death has no power. Amen. Oh, death, where's your sting and oh, grave? Where's your victory? Amen. And he said that if I, in my father's house, there are many mansions. Amen. And, Amen. And that if it were not so, I would not have told you. And if I told you, that means that I'm coming back to receive you so that you can be in that place that I prepared for you. John 14. The only way that we can go from this life to the next life is to give up this flesh. That's right. See, this flesh was only a temporal housing anyway. I think it's in the sixth chapter of, of Genesis where it says that my spirit shall not dwell with man but 120 years, for man is still flesh. The flesh is temporal. It has to go back to where it came from, to the dust of the ground. That means that even though the flesh is gone, I'm not gone. While I was being formed in my mother's womb, now, they say that after the first trimester, that you can actually see a fetus. Mm -hmm. But there was something alive that went into her that fertilized the egg. Mm -hmm. Now, we know that we can do a lot of things with a lot of things, but we cannot produce sperm. We have to get it from somebody. And we cannot make eggs. We have to get those from somebody. In all our genetic knowledge, we do not know how to make those things that cause reproduction to life. The Lord said to us to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. Uh, he wasn't talking about being fruitful and multiplying in a fruit tree. He was talking about do what a tree do. Have a lot of fruit on you. That means he wants us to be productive as in this flesh so that we can consume the whole earth. One man couldn't do that. So now we're looking at this death situation. And we're finding out more and more as as we talk tonight, that death is the first step to eternal life. That's right. So instead of running from death, we should embrace death. We should not be afraid of it. We should not be, I'm not saying to anybody or making suggestions to anybody, but when you think about leaving legacies, legacies is something that you carry on the inside. It's not something that you go to the bank and cash called an insurance check. Come on. All right. Those things are temporal. What a parent leaves as a legacy is passed on from generation to generation to generation to generation. And it's usually something that allows the siblings or the children to continue not to have to beg. Now, the Bible also tells me that God has never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging for bread. Now, righteousness is the legacy of man from one man to the next generation. It is not my dad was in prison, my mother was a crackhead, somebody was an alcoholic, or something else that causes us to be less than what God created us to be. And so death can also be right here while you're walking on the earth. Where do you think they coined the phrase the walking dead? Uh -huh. People that have not done anything that was righteous towards God, prayer, praise, reading their Bible, going to church, or even doing something good for a neighbor. Amen, amen. See, there is no righteousness in sin. Evil continually causes God to turn away from us and not even want to look at us. So... When we had flesh placed on us way back in Genesis, God had no experience in it, and he wanted to gauge us on how we would handle being in flesh, so he gave us a choice. And then we needed to make a decision. 
And the choices are not the decisions. Choices are choices. Decision is the outcome of the choice you make. That's right. All right? And so when we use the word decision, Adam made a conscious decision that I see these two trees. I got the understanding of these two trees. I know what one tree going to do, but I, I, the other tree is eternal life and one tree is death. So when Satan tricked Eve, he said, you shall not surely die. And when Adam was standing there, she bit the apple and she didn't die. He said, oh, my understanding of death is not what it should be because he was not in the spiritual understanding. Flesh, the natural law, is in place. He's looking at the person that he loves. He's looking at influence. He's looking at enthusiasm. He's looking at that which was his did not die in his understanding because it came out of him. But God wanted to see just where he was at in his understanding of who God was. So he gave him an alternative, and yet he chose the latter. He chose to take the apple because he saw that it was good to eat. He saw that it was pleasing to the eye. But he knew all that when he walked up on it. The tree hadn't went nowhere. Had Remember, changed, Eve, changed. Eve came in later. Adam gave, God gave this decree to Adam first before she was even created. So it wasn't like he didn't know. So he's without excuse. Man. All right. But now that he has somebody to entice him, the flesh is being enticed. So now when the flesh is being enticed, then the spirit is being arrested. What am I saying? I'm saying arrested means taken out of the game. Mm -hmm. I think that would be uh, more relationship to Romans 16, 6. It says, don't you know that when you offer yourself to someone as an obedient slave, and this is what he did to the devil, you are a slave to the one you obey. Uh-huh. But then okay. if I'm a slave to God. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Ain't that what Paul said? That's, that's I'm a right. prisoner to the Hallelujah. Lord Jesus he said, Christ. Whether you are a slave to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. Uh -huh. Come on. And the wages of sin is? Death. Uh-huh. And that means that you're going to die, but you don't have to die both ways. That's right. Not completely. You, know, you, can, you, you, can, you can die physically. Uh -huh. But you don't have to die spiritually as long as you do that which is right before God. Amen. Amen. All right? Amen. And so that, that lets me know right there that, you know, the doctors in the hospitals today have waged war against death. Yes. Try to keep folks from dying, have your machines and, and, and tubes in you and all kind of what they call life support, you know. All of those things are to sustain the physical body. Right. But God gave us a place called church. Amen. And a doctor called pastor, teacher, prophet, evangelist, all of these in their special fields, I can call them out. Brain surgeon, uh -huh. uh, uh, orthopedics, yeah. orthodontist. <laughs> uh, I can call them out, but I, I just know about the five that Jesus gave. Amen. Uh, he gave us apostles. That's right. He gave us prophets. Mm -hmm. He gave us evangelists. Mm -hmm. He gave us pastors. And he gave us teachers. Amen. And we all go to the hospital called church. That's right. And all different kinds of names. Pentecostal, mm -hmm. holiness, charismatic. Yeah. Come on. Uh, you can just Baptist, Protestant, Presbyterian. And you can call a Catholic. You can call them out. Muslim. You can call them out. Uh-huh. Uh, Hebrew, uh, the, the temple, the mosque, or the church. All of them. You go to a place where you can get spiritually fed. It's a hospital. And the first temptation was what? He came out hungry uh -huh. and thirsty. Amen. And man should not live by bread, bread alone. alone. That's right. But by every word that proceedeth out, out of, of the, mouth of, the mouth of God. That's right. That's right. All right. So that lets us know right there that. Who has the final say in the sick room? God. Who has the final say so in surgery? God. Who has the final say so on the lake when you're fishing? God. Either you're going to come home with some fish or you ain't. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> See, and when we understand that God is about God's business, giving us all of the things that we need on the physical level so that we can be prepared to receive what he has for us on the spiritual level, we will not reward our children for being disobedient we will not reward our children for being arrogant we will not reward our children for being disrespectful all of those things that cause us to put them on punishment it's called disobedience that's right that's right and now that's the same thing it says in romans 6 21 say what benefit did the reap or did you reap at the time from the things you are now ashamed mm -hmm. okay 
He says, those things resulted in death. In death. Then, then Romans 8, 16, we're going to go to the break. Romans 8, 6 says, the mind governs by the flesh is death. But the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. Amen. And we'll be right back after the break. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. The this Lord. is our Amen. last portion of the program on today. Our program we're talking about today is life and death. We're talking about death and eternal life. And the minister been going over real, real explicitly today uh, about these things. But we also want to give you an opportunity to know that uh, you have to listen to Jesus. He said, Lord Jesus which is our Christ. And these verses we've been talking about uh, as a point of view, okay, it is briefly contained in the marrow, okay, where it was just the most refined part of the body or your this gold that's in you, which is the gospel, which you need to put inside you. As laborers, as a laborer, okay, is worthy of his hire and feels it is due, okay, to his own rights or so death is due, because we all got it coming, okay? We all should be looking at Christ and saying, Lord, help us, because the wages of sin are death, and sinners as well as everybody else own this thing. You know, you got it coming. But eternal life, in no sense or degree, the wages of our righteousness, which we have none, we do nothing whatsoever to earn and are entitled to this gift that God has given us. Never could we do anything to make this happen. There is therefore no way, the most absolute sense, the gift of God, the gift of God, you hear me, is eternal life. Grace reigns and abides and is bestowed on us in every case because of what Jesus did, not for something we did. And as a righteous channel of it, that means you got to go to God to get this. You got to go to Jesus to get this. In this, uh, my view, okay, it says, Who that has tasted the Lord is gracious and can refrain from saying unto him, okay, love us and wash us from our sins in his own blood. And he have made us the kings and the priests according to God's word and in God's family. He is our father. To him be all the glory, all dominion and power forever and ever. Amen. We're going to call those that wants to be a disciple to Christ. You're going to give you an opportunity to, to uh, receive Christ on today. But I'm going to let the minister finish his uh, conversation on life yeah, and gonna, death. I'm going to close it out with a couple of things. One, God... Uh, took himself and put himself in flesh. Amen. And called himself Jesus, the word of God in the flesh. At the last, he had suffered all things that man had suffered and gathered an understanding 
And God has given me to know that when he was in the garden and he said, take this cup from my hand, as his flesh cried out for sympathy and pity and mercy, <laughs> the spirit in God said, no, not my will, thy will be done. That's right. So that when he said not my will, he was talking about the joining of the flesh and the spirit. And he let the spirit be charged over the flesh. Let this flesh be done with whatever it has to go through. And people looked on and seen his condition and said that no man could suffer what he suffered. Hallelujah. And we think about all of the goodness of God and, and we try to have God fit into our understanding. Well, I've read to you that he said that his thoughts are not our thoughts. Our thoughts are not his thoughts. We should be trying to uh, see how we fit into God. Because if we can fit into God, then we become part of God's program. And if we try to fit God into us, he's too large yeah. and he's too small. If we say too small, we're saying that we're going to step on him, walk on him, or do whatever because we can't see him. He's too small. Mm -hmm. And if he's too large, we can't see the top, the bottom, the, the sides, or behind him. So there is no middle ground. We must go to God. God has made himself available through the blood of Jesus. That's right. That means that we don't die anymore, or Jesus died in vain, and that makes God a liar. Ah. I do not know that he's lied to me. Amen. Never has he lied to me. Amen. So when he says to me that I will not suffer death because of the love that I have for Christ, because of me trying to do right things for other people more than myself, for me knowing that if I didn't know how to pray, that he would teach me how if I ask him to. You have to know how to get to God in order for God to be able to draw you to him. He said, no man can call my son, my son Jesus the son of God unless my Holy Spirit put it in him. Every man has the law written in his heart. But no man has dominance over death. Only God, who is the giver of life, who is eternal life, and draws all things to him for his sake and for his purpose, not for ours. We cannot draw God into us. Hey Amen. You know, Thank you, I, Lord. I, I, you know, I was listening to what you're saying. It's like most of the time you see people out here and they're trying to put God in this box. That's right. Okay? You can't they, do that. They're trying to put him in this box that will be uh, just a certain shape, a certain size, a certain position, or a certain form in order for him to operate in what they believe he operating in, but he's bigger than that. He's bigger than you that. You can't put him in a box. I don't care how big your box is. If he's you too small, he's going to come out to crack. Can't, right. You can't put him in a, put a, a him box, in small box. He's too big for that as well or too small for that because he's infinite, infinitesimal infinite. this way and infinitesimal that way. And, and that brought me to a thought. You know, uh, being born again, I never understood quite being born again until I was born again. Okay. Amen. Hallelujah. I didn't understand it because you no know, people was telling me about being born again and they trying to explain to me what born again right. is about. But until I got born again, you didn't I, didn't, I couldn't understand it. Me. I couldn't understand it. I'm like, wait a minute. Wait, this is what that's about. Because, you know, Nicodemus said, Nicodemus was a Pharisees, okay, during the uh, time of Christ, mm -hmm. uh, ruler of the Jews. The mm -hmm. same man came to Jesus by night because he, he was kind of ashamed. He's a Pharisee. You don't want nobody to see him with Jesus and said to him, Rabbi. And Jesus said, it's in the word of God, don't call no man Rabbi That's because right. he got that name. That's his title. So how I'm going to call another man Rabbi. That's like calling him Jesus. Mm -hmm. Okay. He said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher from God. He already gave him his props mm -hmm. that no man can do these miracles that thou does except That's God right. be with him. That's right. And Jesus answers and said unto verily, verily, I say unto you, okay, say unto thee, except a man be born again, born again. he cannot even see. Woo, yeah. Hallelujah. Can't the kingdom of God. It. You can't even see it. Can't and I'm, see it. so most folks, we try to tell them about this kingdom of God. They can't see it until they get born again. They Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Because I'm like, hey, I was. How can he enter back into his mother's womb? Yeah, he said, how can he even enter back into the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus born. answered to him, said, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born, born of again. water. Mm-hmm. 
and of the spirit. And of the spirit. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. And of the what? The spirit. And he cannot spirit. enter the kingdom of he God. Can't even get in. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That's right. Okay. And that which is born, born of, of the, the spirit, spirit is spirit. spirit. Amen. Okay. Marvel not at these things he told him. Said, yet we must be born again. Mm-hmm. The wind blows wherever it wants to. <clears throat> That's right. Okay. And then how you hear the sound, but you don't know where it's coming from. That's right. You can't tell which way it came or which way it's going. He said, even when, so even is everyone. Okay. That's that last, last right. word. He said, so is, so is everyone that is born of the spirit. Of the spirit. That's John 3, 1 through 8. Okay. That's right. John Hallelujah. 3, 1 through 8. John 3, 1 through 8. Mm-hmm. Everybody that's born of the spirit, which you're talking about, ain't got to worry about dying. That's right. Okay. Why? Because he just said it right here in his word. He says right here in his word, he said that that is born of water and of spirit. He said that which is born of flesh, which is this stuff here, is right. flesh. It's flesh. And that which is born of the spirit, okay, which is unseen, is spirit. That's right. Now, so that means when the flesh dies, does the spirit die with it? No. 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 Why? Because he just said right here, if the fle- what's born of the flesh is flesh. That's what's right. born of the spirit is spirit. spirit. So when the flesh dies, the spirit's still alive. If mm-hmm. it believe that the kingdom of God is where it want to be. Everybody said, well, when I get to the kingdom of God, I want to be at the right hand of Jesus. Guess where I want to be? Wherever the spirit of God want me to be, Amen. I just want to be there. Amen. If also, say, if I'm the gatekeeper, I'm the gatekeeper. If he say I'm the shadow up under the throne, I'm the shadow up under the throne. If he say I'm the dust in the corner, I'm the dust in the corner. I don't care. Right. Put me wherever you want to be, Lord. Just make sure that the Long spirit I'm I walk righteousness. around in. Is your righteousness and not mine. Not mine. So I'm trying to keep God out of that box. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to get people who are suffering from death uh, in their family and the loved ones they've lost. If you know that person was saved, you know that person lived a righteous life according to God's word, and you live in the same type of life according to Jesus' word, then you ain't got to worry about death. Because your spirit and their spirit is going to be one with God. Okay, your flesh going to die. Everybody's flesh going to die here because this is dust anyway. This is temporal. This is just a house. This is just a a vessel that maintains the spirit because the spirit is what? Spirit. Mm -hmm. It got to have something to hold on to. It's got to have something to walk and abide in. And if it can't abide in this body, where's going to abide at? See, even that lets you know that Nicodemus was spiritually dead. Amen. Because he was coming to a place where he thought that he could get spiritual life. Uh huh. Then in verse 12, it says, if I told you, this is Christ talking. Come on now. If I told you, Nicodemus, about earthly things and you believe not, how shall you believe it if I tell you a heavenly things? No man hath ascended up to heaven, but the but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is already in heaven. Yeah. Uh, see, <laughs> you need to understand some <laughs> stuff on, on the spiritual again. level. Yes, that's right. spiritual. And he says, and no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven. You're looking at him. That's right. Jesus. That's it. Even the Son of Man, which is in heaven, which means that he was sitting already on a high place up in heaven while he was yet down here on earth, which proved that his omnipotence is real. Amen. See, Amen. He, he the only somebody that I know can be every place at the same time. Ah, come right? on, come on, come on. And see, then he goes on to say, after that, and no man ascended up, he said, but he that came down, we ain't even got to verse uh, uh, John 3.16 yet. And as Moses lifted up the servant in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Right. Why? For God so loved the world Uh that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Saved. That's all we've been trying to tell you all night long. Get somebody saved. Get somebody saved. It's to get somebody saved so that they don't have to be bound up anymore with the fear of death. Like, I ain't got no food. So what? I ain't got no place to lay my head. So what? I got to go to the doctor. So what? All of these so what's now come into play because... You don't have to be afraid of dying one one no more. In the mighty Hallelujah. name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We got about one minute, y'all. And and I'm going to turn it do, over to the bishop. And what we're going to do in that one minute, we are going to go to Romans 10, 9. And that is uh, definitely what it says. The word of God says, if you confess your sins and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died and rose from the grave, okay? I mean, you got to believe this thing, okay? And he is who he say he is. And you ask him to come into your life. 
and you repent of your sins, he will come into your life, change your life, transform your life, and give you a new life. Amen. And you will be born again. Hallelujah. So if you've got to do that, just go in your private secret corner, your closet, and say, Lord Jesus, come into my life on today. I believe everything that you said. I believe you died and rose again, and I believe you can save me. Do that now, Lord Jesus, and I will follow you all the days of my life, and I'll learn the rest as I go, God. And I thank you right now. In Jesus' name I pray, and I ask it all. Amen. Amen. If you say it, that little simple prayer or any form Amen. of that prayer. You just got saved. Hallelujah. We're going to see you next time here on the Sports Outreach Ministry Show. I wish you to call in. The number here is 216-672-4300. Thank you, LG. Thank you, man of God, Minister Praise Bailey. God. Hallelujah for that good lesson on today. And like you said, don't be afraid of death. Death is the twin brother of sleep. You don't know no more about what's happening when you sleep than you do when you're dead. And we want to thank you all for being here on the show with us today. We want to give God the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask Jesus it all. Amen. 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 See you next time on the ministry show. Amen. Hallelujah.